Have you ever felt pressure to decide exactly what you're supposed to do in life and figure out some master plan on how to get there? What if I told you that Vera Wang was a figure skater and a journalist before entering the fashion industry at age 40? Or that Harrison Ford was a carpenter for 15 years before becoming Han Solo in Star Wars? Or what about a janitor by day and a bouncer by night becoming the Pope? Now, I would guess that these individuals didn't have those initial jobs I noted listed as part of some master plan, knowing it would lead to those final careers. No, I would guess that there was a moment in each of their lives where they decided to detour and take a risk, finding success in the end. I stand before you today in my mid to late 30s, and it's only recently that I feel like I'm truly where I'm meant to be. And what I'm doing today is just about the farthest thing that I could have imagined from the plan I laid out for myself. Technically, even if I wanted to, I couldn't have chose this because so long ago, at that time, autonomous vehicles only existed in fiction. So why is it that we have this sense or these feelings that you have to know by a certain age exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to get there? I mean, I know for me, my parents really made me believe that I could do anything. And there was never a time that I felt pressure to choose a career path and move along but somehow the pressure still followed me around every turn. As we all know, life throws us roadblocks. And in that moment, we're faced with a choice to either hold and steadfast right on our position or to detour, to take a risk, to take our hands off the wheel, not knowing where it will lead us. 20 years ago, my well-laid plans kicked off and not soon after they began to unravel a couple of college degrees and a decade of experience in the corporate world left me feeling unfulfilled and searching for what was next. I was not a fan of my plan anymore. It's here after many sleepless nights that I decided to take a risk, the biggest risk of my life. And some might say I took my hands off the wheel. I switched into autonomous mode and I just got ready to embrace the journey. It took me to Hollywood, California, where I decided to chase a lifelong passion of acting. And just about 10 years ago to the day, I actually stepped on the set of my very first network sitcom for my very first speaking role. Now, I was a wreck with nerves because you see, in my scene, I had to flash the main character. We do the scene, and after what felt like the longest pause ever, the director yells, cut, and everyone started laughing. Success. My first comedy in the books. A couple of years had passed and I booked a few more TV shows, some commercials, a web series or two, but I was really starting to doubt the risk I had taken. You see, no one really tells you that you actually have to pay to be an actor. Uh, in the corporate world, all you need is your resume, but in Hollywood, you need professional headshots, preferably updated every six months. You have to subscribe to multiple casting websites so that your agents and managers can submit you for work. And on each of these websites, you have to pay to upload each and every one of those new headshots. You also have a nice demo reel to showcase all of your experience, but you're new still and can't book these jobs, so you don't really have that experience, so you have to pay someone to go film the scenes for you and to edit them and then upload where they charge by the second. There are acting classes and you know, really you have to become this like expert marketer and the product you're selling is yourself. So I had to create websites and engage in far too many digital and direct mailing campaigns and really the list goes on and on. Basically, I'm trying to tell you that I very quickly ran out of money. My savings was depleted and I was living off of credit cards. I had to take a side job just to pay the rent. But I was keeping and holding to this new plan because I'd already convinced myself and everyone else that it was such a great idea to leave my safe, well-paying job to go on this new journey. I was taking the steering wheel back over to head on this specific path. And then it happened. I booked my first 
co-lead role in a film opposite a very well-known actress. It was written by someone I truly admired and directed by a legend. It was set to have its international film premiere at the iconic Venice Film Festival. Before I knew it, I was on a plane to Italy. I arrived at the venue and I was in awe. Actresses whose careers I idolized, like Scarlett Johansson and Sandra Bullock, were there for their very own premieres. It was insane. I was escorted to my own private Maserati, where I had all of about a 100-foot ride to the largest red carpet I had ever seen. I stepped out to a sea of flashing lights and hundreds of photographers on either side of the carpet, and they were all yelling, Tennille, Tennille, look here, and whistling to try to get my attention. Just behind them were hundreds more fans, some of which even had pictures of me held up in the air in hopes I'd give them an autograph. I made my way down the carpet to meet up with my full cast and crew, and we did one last group shot. My moment had happened. My risks had finally paid off. Or so I thought. I arrived back home and it was much in the same. Little to no auditions, month after month. I tried to get new agents and managers and I was met with everything from, you still need to get more credits, to your nose is too large. Maybe you should lose a little weight. There are a lot of blondes, a lot of competition there. Also, when I had this crazy idea to change my hair and become a redhead just before my wedding, I was then told that there weren't enough roles for redheads. Defeated, <laughs> I just took more work in my side job and I switched back into autonomous mode yet again to see where it would take me. Now, let me pause here. You might be asking, why am I telling you to go out and take a risk when I tried and so clearly failed. Well, as I mentioned, it's about where the risks will lead us. You see, for me, in taking my risk and adapting my plans, I was able to add valuable marketing and communications experience to my resume. And the side job that I mentioned was actually as a spokesperson on behalf of a leading automotive manufacturer. Now this not only built on those PR skills, but it opened my world to the automotive sector. And it provided extensive training in vehicle technology, advanced driver assistance systems, and insight into the future of mobility, which I soaked up like a sponge. So when I found my way to Canada, I had an interesting skill set when a new opportunity came my way at a tech startup. What started as a need for marketing and PR quickly turned into more. Because as you may or may not know, at a startup, you have to wear multiple hats. And my ability to adapt and to blend together all the skills and learnings from my previous detours in life allowed me to excel. And with the support and trust of the CEO, I was given the opportunity to head up the company's very first spinoff. I was able to take my knowledge of tech and combine it with my knowledge of vehicle safety systems and push forward a company that's paving the way in the connected and autonomous vehicle space. And in this role, I had the confidence to take yet another risk and push us from an infrastructure play into full-on autonomous mobility. Standing here today, I would have never dreamed I'd go from Hollywood to being the CEO of a high-tech company. But here I am. And at every crossroads along the way, I questioned my choice to detour off those initial paths laid out so long ago. It's only now when I step back and realize every time I took my hands off the wheel, every slight detour gave me the skills I needed when the most exciting and unexpected opportunity came my way. And now I appreciate that the journey is ever changing. And as long as I work hard and am open to adapting my plans, who knows what the future may hold. So now I ask you, to go forth and to toss aside all of the pressures to lay out this master plan and know that it's okay to not have it all figured out in this exact moment because who knows, what you're meant to do might not even exist.
And lastly, if you've already laid out this plan for yourself, that it's not too late to take a risk. Whether you have this urge to detour or it's forced upon you in these unstable times that we're seeing as part of this global pandemic. And it's okay to fail because eventually you'll get to your final destination. For me, my red carpet may have changed in size, but standing here today on this red carpet, it's something that I never dreamed possible. Perhaps if I may be so bold, I ask you to look at your life like you're riding in an autonomous vehicle. You may not have your hands on the wheel, but if you truly learn to trust in the technology, you can arrive at your destination having taken in every sight, every sound, and every moment more vividly. And you can use it to set the stage for what comes next in your life. In closing, I have just one more question. Are you ready to take your hands off the wheel? Thank you.